First, some disclaimers. We're not professional. Not at all. Not in the least. Strap in your seats, kids. We're all in it. Not trained. I am totally self-taught. You were so good for about 30 minutes in town. Yeah, you don't need to discredit us. We can discredit ourselves. <laughs> so welcome to the Amateur Dads Podcast. There are basically three beverages in the world that pretty much everyone internationally drinks. Beer, wine, well, four. Beer, wine, coffee, or tea. What about water? Not everybody has access to water, Jay. Especially clean water. This is true. I should not laugh about that. That's right. That's right. I'm just saying. Not, I'm the ass. That's right. You are the ass. <laughs> ass. <laughs> All right. Let's get started. <laughs> but the point. But the point being is, my my bit would be there's four universal beverages in the world: coffee, tea, beer, and wine. Learn to drink at least one of those, because you'll be you'll pretty much have an opportunity to socialize with anybody anywhere around the world. Yeah, I could see that. Well, think about it. I mean, now, then you got to take it one step further, which is if you're a coffee drinker, okay, don't be a purist dick, all right? Have an iced coffee in Vietnam, would you? That's how they take it. That's I might have to be the purist dick. Missing out. <laughs> Missing out. That's all I'm saying. What's going on, everybody? This is the Amateur Dads Podcast for Father's Day 2017. I am Keith. I'm Jay. And we are here to talk about a number of different topics uh, that we hope will be of interest to um, hopefully a lot of people out there, especially newer parents. Um, if you're like me, I am a 40-year-old uh, with my first child, uh, just turned nine months, gosh, he's nine and a half months now. Um, and every day I wake up horrified in a cold sweat. Hope, trying to figure out which which manner in which I'm going to mess up my child today. Um, trying to figure it all out, trying to, to navigate it all. And oftentimes I lean on this gentleman across from me. I'm Jay, again, and uh, the 34-year-old father of three. Uh, two girls and a boy. So I have a little bit more experience than my older brother here. And we... Uh, like he said, we're back and forth always about what happened, what's happening, what's going on in each other's lives. So we're all in different phases and we're trying to just share some of our amateur parent dad knowledge. Just with trying you to figure guys. it out like everybody else. Yeah. Nobody uh, is a professional parent. Um, we all, it's all on, jo- on the job training. And, you know, we're just trying to share what we know. OJT. <laughs> Learning on the job. All right, so today, uh, recently, our family went on some a vacation down to Williamsburg. It was our side of the family, so we had our parents with us, and then we had our kids, obviously. Yeah, it was Memorial Day, so it was it was that was pretty cool. It was a good um, bit of time together, everybody all in one place, and it was it was interesting. There's positives, there's negatives of having a mass exodus of family <laughs> go and travel to one spot. The logist- well, the logistics get a little interesting because you've got, I mean, we've got already four kids, all of whom are what? Below the age of, of six. Six, six uh, four, and two and a half. Oh my gosh. And then, a, and then an infant. So Two and three quarter. Yeah. So it's... Uh, it's a little bit of a challenge trying to figure out ways to, to make everything enjoyable for everybody. I, however, do, did have a lot of fun with it. I think Williamsburg was actually a pretty good choice uh, for a spot. It was because um, it's only two and a half hours away, mm-hmm. roughly three mm-hmm. hours uh, for some. And that's not too bad for a car drive. You know, we yeah. they were asleep when we left and we just they woke up when we were about 30 minutes out. So nice. Yeah, we so kind nice. we kind of we kind of ended up doing the same thing because we we both, you know, my wife and I we both had to work through Friday and uh, then we're going to come down and join everybody. So thankfully, um, 
you know, the baby sort of sleeps well in the car. So we, we just decided to leave later and got there later, but it, it was fine. It wasn't a big deal. You know, the, the, the cool thing about it, I think was that between Bush Gardens and Water Country USA, which is where we pretty much spent the majority of our time, there were things that were pretty applicable for everybody. For our vantage point, Bush Gardens wasn't, it wasn't as enjoyable for us only in the sense that there wasn't a lot of stuff that we all could ride on. First of all, getting my wife on a roller coaster is usually an effort in the first place because she's incredibly afraid of heights. Um, usually I have to just kind of push her in line and not let her out and, and make, you know, <laughs> no, no, well, <laughs> like we're, we're going to do this. Let's go. And just to get her on the get her on the ride and let it be done in order for her to kind of get on with enjoying the rest of the day. Cause if she thinks about it too much, you know, it, it becomes more of an anxiety thing. But with, uh, you know, with our son, you know, mo- I would say the mass majority of the stuff at Bush gardens, at least you, you do have to be, I would say you probably have to be closer to about a year old, maybe hopefully kind of walking on your own or at least on at a point where you can pull yourself up or hold on to things. Yeah, there's really not much there. Yeah. For the, I mean, that little you'd almost have to go uh, to like a sesame place or something. And well, even there, I think I think they still oh, have yeah. some of those requirements and stuff like that. But yeah. but. I mean, what was cool was, I mean, look, it, it was about just spending the time together. And the cool thing was that we were able to kind of trade up doing rides. Mom's not big on rides. So, you know, she. It's spent, built in. Spent, yeah. Well, yeah. We were basically tag teaming the kids all day and who's going to go on the coaster next and who's going to go on this ride. Who's going to go on the teacups. Who's going to get wet. Who's going to do whatever, you know, and, and frankly, as a, as a theme park, I always think Bush Gardens is a little more. It seems to me to, to be a little more relaxing. It's not quite so cramped as some of the other theme parks that are out there. You know, pretty nice. Yeah. There's, there's tons of shade. So even even on a hot day, it wasn't it wasn't unbearable or anything like that. I will that. say that. There is a ton of shrubbery and trees. And you know, they when you're walking in, they're like, welcome to the most beautiful theme park, <laughs> which I, that's debatable. I forgot they actually had, didn't they actually have a sign? That yeah, that? there's a sign. <laughs> uh, like I said, that's debatable, but... It, they did have a lot of shade, so yeah. that was that's good. The funny, I was uh, thinking about all the times I kept going. Well, when we were in Disney, <laughs> that's right. Because you went, I, when, how far before that trip did you? We went on spring on break, so that was March. So like two, three Which, months. Which side before? note? That's the time to go to uh, Disney. Is it really? Yeah, it's so nice. Because um, it's not too hot. I would have thought it'd been packed though. There weren't no. a ton of spring breakers or anything. No. Even if there's a lot of people and the parking lot is filled, it does not feel that way when mm. you're in there. It just, I don't know what they do. They're just, it's so spread out. I did feel a little cramped when we were at Bush. And really? If you recall, we spent so much time going like <laughs> 20 yards into the theme park. Well, <laughs> there, there we, was, okay, let's, let's back up a little bit because there are reasons for that. And some of that had to do with the fact, and again, pointing to the logistics of, traveling in mass you know we were fortunate in that you know our dad had set up to get like um tickets for everybody so there was a certain number of tickets they were assigned certain individuals and apparently i guess the the sea world theme parks now part of how they manage their multi-day passes is when you go through you have the ticket they scan it and then they very quickly take a picture of you to verify that this is who you are it's a new system yeah, which and they it, said they did have a note where it's like, please bear with us. Yeah, this is a new system. Yeah, yeah. So, so it wasn't. I, I, look, we were fine. But that part wasn't bad. The taking the picture and getting in, it was the oh, I have these printouts of tickets. Oh, that's more in on an envelope. Uh, yeah, but that's us. That's not them. <laughs> that was totally not a them thing. That was more us tra- <laughs> traveling together kind of thing. So. You know, it's, hey, do we have a stroller? Do we have this? Do we do we need something? Although you guys did the stroller system there where you could pretty much trade off yeah. a stroller. Th- How did that work? Was that good? We uh, got that tidbit from, from Disney um, <clears throat> that you don't necessarily need to take your own stroller. Right. When you're going in, it's another thing you have to worry about. Um, I don't know if Bush did it, but Disney had where you could do multiple days. So you could pay for multiple days of a stroller rental. Huh. And so when you just show up, you have your name thing and they just give it to you. So I, it was the same type of stroller, that plastic 
Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a no frills kind of stroller, it, but it but it worked. It is. It's not for comfort, but it is very handy, and you can just drop it off. You really don't have that extra care of someone took how my. Many, stroller, how many times do you think you, know? you guys swapped it out? About half a dozen times. Maybe? Well, with Bush, because they have the. Um, what are those things called? The Sky Ride. The Sky Ride. Yeah. You drop it off and you take your name tag and then you can just pick one up on the other side. So we did that maybe four times. That was nice. Cause so by comparison, for all you guys that are taking notes out there, um, we brought a stroller, but we, we didn't bring the gargantuan USS you know baby that we tend to take <laughs> out um, on the everyday. This was actually, I think it's a 3D light is the model, I think, of the stroller. It's pretty compact, very, very light. I was not the original purchaser of said stroller, so it took me more than a minute to figure out how the hell to it was confusing. It, fold it up. I was just kind of like, what? Even opening it. I know. The but little it, hook but, but, on but, the side. But, that... on, but honestly, once you know how to do it, you feel like such a dumbass for, for <laughs> spending a half an hour figuring it out. I mean, I mean, literally, I had to kind of YouTube how the hell to open it up and, and close it up. And then once I had that, it was like, oh. That's so simple. A child could do it and hated myself pretty much the rest of the day. But that said, taking taking that around in the park was easy. You know, we I I feel like we'd kind of planned ahead to where we didn't bring more than we really needed. We had like sunscreen. We had bottles of water. We had hats for the kids or sunglasses or things like that. So people could be comfortable. But even taking that on the sky ride was not a big deal. Most of the rides would accommodate a stroller. Um, I know the tram did. Um, in fact, if you were getting on the tram, you had kind of an express lane. Entry. You had a special section that was that wider. Was nice. than that was the other nice. Ones. Although, again, because we were traveling in mass and you know somebody else had all the tickets, we got there and then had to wait. Well, on the way, <laughs> on the first guys, time in but... to when we went into Bush, we got separated. Right. You went first because we didn't get in the line with right, you right and then, and then we, at we water country later. or yeah. no later we got on we all got on at the same time coming at back out and i right. had to tell the lady we're riding with them so then we were able to get right. in with you guys and not have that same thing happen which coincidentally was just in the nick of time because there were there were thunderstorms coming in that was the last that ended up being the last tram to the parking lot for a while um on that particular day so that was that was very fortunate for us. Yeah. So you, did you ever have times like, God, I got to haul this thing around? Actually, well, th- this is probably where the type of stroller that we had helped because it wasn't this big bulky thing that we were stuck in line. It, it's actually pretty slim, very lightweight. So I, I feel like I'm doing a, a plug for the 3D light, but. We're not, this is not a paid endorsement. It's not a paid endorsement <laughs> and this is not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, also when we previously went. Last year to mm-hmm. Disney, we bought these twenty dollar strollers from the Walmart that was around there. Yeah, and we took one in, and it was just a simple. I mean, you don't umbrella need, yeah. stroller. Yeah, and that was fine. Yeah. Now I will tell but you. But then what, we were stuck with having another stroller at the house, <laughs> and we're like, eh. well, here's what was funny. Once you guys, you guys didn't just settle up on a single stroller. You guys got a double stroller. Well, yeah, you Which have what, a. Two and a half year old and a four year old. Well, here was the funny thing was I I think the most the best example of where that earned its money had to come pretty much in the middle of the day when we were getting around lunchtime when the two youngest, you know, your two youngest kids crashed out. One's completely bent over the other. The other one's pretty much using using him as a as a prop for, for her face so she can sleep. You know, our baby's asleep in the stroller. So we had three kids all crashed out and, um, you know, they, they slept for a while. So obviously the ride was okay. They didn't have a problem really doing that. And everybody was fairly happy regardless. So anyway, and in terms of, of like rides and stuff, I got the sense that at least if the kids were a little bit older, so if they were in the six, two and a half, three year old range, maybe, that in most cases, the kids were tall enough to ride sort of the simple rides, some of the carnival style stuff that's not horribly fast or, you know, does anything crazy or dangerous. And even in the kids area, it was neat because they had like a mini roller coaster. They had some of the more step up kind of getting ready for the big leagues type rides in there that were neat. And they even had shows that just ran concurrently that you, you could just walk into. You didn't have to step out to a different area to go 
Yeah, they just performed like right there in the yeah. walkway, sort of. Yeah, we just walked up, and there's you know it, their whole thing is Sesame Street, so they had uh, the Cookie Monster, Cookie Elmo. Monster, Bert and Ernie, Elmo, you know, a whole slew of other characters, Grover, um, you know, all these all these different characters right there, um, just accessible, and it, you know, you weren't having to elbow somebody to get in and get a photo or something like that, which I think yeah. I was certainly more excited than. Certainly my son was because he doesn't know who the hell Grover is, but it was fun and it, and it was good. And I, 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 do, I do think we had a very good day at Bush Gardens, despite the. Uh, They're kind know, of a mixed bag because even in, in that, you know, you're we're I'll say Bush is a lot less organized, I feel, on the ride. They just kind of you're in the line and then you show up and it's like pick a seat. They don't have well, real much guidance. Here's here. OK, now in their defense, I will I will say this having. And and here's the context for everyone who's out there listening. My very, very first job um, in high school involved me working at a theme park. I worked at the Six Flags out in New Jersey. Six Flags Great, great adventure. adventure. And I will say this. The, the biggest comparison in terms of preparedness and efficiency and readiness between a theme park like that and even the ones in Virginia and the ones that are in Florida, the ones in Florida have the benefit of being open all year round. So they are constantly doing their stuff. Whereas for everybody else, they are very much seasonal. And so Memorial day weekend is like the, it's like the grand opening for those guys. Now that said, were there a couple things that maybe could have gone a little smoother? Maybe, but I, I promise you by the next weekend, they were probably running very, very smooth and very, very quick. And, uh, had it, you know, had everything a little bit more together. That's just the nature of being seasonal versus, Full time year round. Well, but they had been open a few weekends beforehand. We'll call those okay. soft openings, and I, I will leave that to your <laughs> your criticism. I I had a good day. I felt like everybody had had a fun time. Um, everybody definitely crashed that night once we got home and and had uh, had gotten some tea and yeah, it, I, I think everybody slept pretty good that that first night. That's for sure. Yeah. Now, in terms of parenting, there was on a few occasions when you have a big group where some would say one thing with to one child. And then there's other times where you, you would say something else. So like at the Sesame place, mm-hmm. the, Hey, go get wet. <laughs> yeah. Go, go ahead. Go yeah, get wet. It's, it's fine. And so you're, you're okay with a certain level. Right. And then it ends up you being want to splash. a you don't thousand want to be, yeah, times past yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. It's um, the difference between are you getting on a flume ride or are you going in the deep zone and getting yourself completely soaked or yeah, something. Yeah. Which, you know, it was warm. It was, I forgot how hot it was, but it was decent. And so the out. clothes yeah. dried. Yeah. But then it's, but sorry, you can't get on this ride because you're too wet. Right. And, and, then somebody and gets so it's like, yeah. you know, whatever. So, uh, so one little monkey ranch, uh, real quick over to water country where we, Spent two days, well, one and a half day because the you could weather, call it two days. We had two yeah. entries, yeah, that's true. And, and the second day we were there, I think, even longer than the first day, so yeah, it was two yeah. full days there. I think Water Country was by far the best, like for our situation. I think it worked out great because there was something there literally for everybody, mm-hmm. even if you had a, a toddler or an infant. The only requirement in the park was that they had to have a Coast Guard certified life vest. Um, and depending on the, the depth of some of the different areas, uh, an older child would probably have to use a life vest as well. But for the most part, you could use the wave pool. You could use a la- lazy river. You could, there's that whole play area that we went to. That was, that uh, was pretty cool. It was pretty nice. I forgot what it was called, but, um, they had, a uh, slides in there and fountains shooting water. Oh, it was, uh, and... was it, was it UFO H2O or something? I think it was the opposite H2O UFO. H2O UFO. Yeah. And they had chairs, yeah, shit, yeah, yeah, lounges yeah, yeah. all the way around. It was really nice. And it was kind of in the center and you know, you and could it, escape and go to a different ride if you wanted. And for parents out there, I will completely give both parks props for having numerous changing stations, numerous, uh, sites available for you to tend to either uh, breastfeeding or changing a child or whatever. Like at the, uh, what was it? H2O UFO. That uh-huh. was the name. There was one right adjacent to that area so that we didn't have to go all the way back to where the lockers were in the main bathrooms in order to 
you know, clean up our son or do whatever. We could just fix him up right there, change out the swim diaper and, and, and let him enjoy the rest of the, the time in the, in the park. Um, for you guys following along, the other thing I would, I would remind you is aside from the life vests, um, they will require if, if your child, I believe is an age requirement. Um, but it may just be if, you know, if they're not fully potty trained or something like that, the expectation is that they will use a swim diaper, um, in the, uh, in the, the park. And so, the yeah, yeah, which, well, that's, I mean, that's a, which mind you will not do a darn thing for absorbing pee, but it will prevent anything else from exiting, uh, said swimsuit. Um, yeah. Well, which, when you're sitting in a big, huge pool, <laughs> Yes, when you're sitting in a in a huge wave pool of piss, it doesn't quite uh, <laughs> doesn't quite matter. You're you're willing to accept a certain level of uh, of of things yeah. in the water, but and the thing with those swimmers is if you you know you can spot the kids that did not have swimmers on, yeah, because they have that ginormous <laughs> butt. It's like a sponge of, covered butt that yeah. just you want to like it hasn't been wrung out and it's just yeah. <laughs> it's and you're like yeah, you. You didn't have the swimmer. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but no, they are good for that. Yeah. So. And they have, and and you know, they have lockers. They have, um, which you could do rentals on for the full day. So, um, you have lockers to store your stuff. They do have the life vest, but the key with that, which you had seen, was that you have to get there early. And we had yeah. some size problems too, where we needed to find a. A small, the smallest kind, and yeah. you had to kind of go to different spots for it. We just pl- we just played it safe because we down. we weren't sure how small they were going to be or what was going to be there. And and frankly, we were planning on spending, you know, some time in the pools later in the summer anyway. So we just said, you know what, we'll just get our own. Um, he'll have it for a while, no big deal, and um, that worked out really really well. Um, but yeah, the parks were nice. Um, the facilities were good. I think the the weather certainly worked in our favor, especially on the second day at Water Country, where it was just nothing but sunshine. Um, yeah, that was perfect. First it, day was overcast, and it was. And I don't know if it was the, if it was the forecast for that particular weekend or what, but it didn't seem like either park was really overcrowded or anything like that. The lines were pretty short. Everything went really fast. And for Memorial uh, Day, was I was pretty, shocked that it was as yeah, me too. Uh, not empty, but. It wasn't empty. It just wasn't Not like, as like, full like, like the parking lot's like two thirds full versus right. being completely full and rides that you would probably expect to wait an hour or, you know, half hour to an hour to get on. You were getting on within like 15 minutes. Speaking of rides. Yes. We have to talk about Water Country USA. <laughs> what was it called? It was the, uh, you got to look that up really yeah, quick. Yeah, I'm going to look it up. So, so at Water Country, they have a variety of different rides that are out there some most of which are set up for single riders or if you're you know an, an adult or a child you can ride in tandem on a two-person raft um, some of them are open slides the you know the traditional slides where it's just kind of kind of winds and bends and and uh, you just have your turns and you get wet some of them are more pipeline style where they they I think pump a little more water in there so you definitely get a little more soaked um, and they can be a little more fun because uh, they, they get a little dark um, and then there was this particular one, which was a four person raft ride that, um, would get you the colossal curl. Yes, that's it. Um, where, <laughs> God, that was so much fun where the best way I can describe it to someone, if you've never been on it, it, it is sort of like a pipeline ride slash open slide ride combined with what I can only term the most fun four person half pipe you're ever going to be on. It's um, sort of like if you were riding in one of those, the ship ride at the fair <laughs> where it takes you all the way up to the side right, and right, right, it's right, not right. the one that goes all the way around, but when it goes up and you have that weightlessness, yep. except you're on a water ride, <laughs> not strapped in just yeah. on the handles. Oh my gosh. And, and the thing about it is, uh, you know, in our group, most definitely I'm the, I'm the weight on that thing. Um, and they do have a weight requirement on it, by the way. So it's 700 pounds, 700 pounds total, four. 700 pounds total for a group of four. And you stand on a scale. Yes. Now, for those of you that just cringed at that, at that possibility, I will tell you, there's no numbers. They don't throw out the, yeah. the, the final it's, sum it's of your group on there, but it's just basically just a green light, red light. And if it turns out to be a red, they'll give you the option of, Hey, you can go down two at a time. 
if you need to. So for most people, I would say, even if you go down just two of you, it's going to be fine. The only the only difference may be that perhaps you don't go quite as high on that semi vertical yeah. uh, uh, portion of the slide, but um, it's still enjoyable. You're going to have a good time. You'll be fine. Um, but for us, it was you know it was dad, it was you, it was me, and then it was your daughter. <laughs> All right, she together. loved. She loved. Oh my goodness! I, I I had never seen her eyes get so big as when we were on there, and I don't think my eyes had gotten quite so big as when we went into that slide. And I'm going down backwards, so I'm pulling the raft with my big dum dum behind, <laughs> uh, going going backwards, and watching you guys and your eyes just get big. And this was almost like, I mean, the best way I can describe it was it was like. Those 80s style comedy movies where people are just screaming their heads off um, and shouting like something, you know, uh, runaway cars, runaway horses. Like watch or, out kind of yeah, like watch out yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, it was definitely that kind of style of thing where we were just like, whoa. No, we, we were loud <laughs> and uh, our wives were like, we could hear you guys. <laughs> they didn't know when we were going down, but they could hear us. And we're just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we it was because even your eyes because you since you were the back you mm-hmm. you backed into the uh the slope oh, that's right i was on and the you top. got you went to the top and so when we got to the top your face just got longer until it was like lurch size and you're like <laughs> and then we went down, and then you go down the last part right. and even ab- above that it's not that that's just the main part of it because right. you still have a drop which is pretty right. i don't know the angle but it's pretty decent angle drop yeah it's like, like it's like it's almost like a dual drop. The first part kind of gets you moving, and then the next one gives you the speed to go into that. Yeah, <laughs> and in portion. between, there's a little part where I think they made it to where you kind of go side to side, and they right. have fountain like waterfalls going oh, you down. Get so you're yeah. going side yeah. to side on there. It was great. We went on it the first day, and then we went on it the second day. Yeah, you actually took Mandy on it the second yeah. time. Yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. went down. The two of us, Dad and I, went down mm-hmm. with Ariana and. Uh, it was it was, it was fun. It, it was, was fun. it was really really good. That and, and you know, hey, the best part though, mm. you don't have to tug the damn tube up the stairs. <laughs> They've got that's a right. tube escalator. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. That that can be one of the interesting facets of going to a park like Water Country. Is you, you usually, well, back in the day, didn't it used to be a thing that you could rent? Your own tube? Yes, you could. And you could take it around everywhere. They, they're not doing that anymore. I, I doubt it. Because they have so many different ones now. Because they have the tandem ones. They have the singles. They have this. Has the special one. All right. Have. So way back in the... So this would have been when you and I were kids. So this is a long time ago. Um, yeah, we're old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. You came around when uh, uh, Star Wars came around. Oh. I think I'm from E.T. I think. You are from E.T. <laughs> so there's your uh, 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 reference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is absolutely right. Oh god, but anyway, um, you know, back then you used to be able to rent the tubes and you would just carry them around all day, which had its pros and cons. And, and thankfully, I think the system they have there now works just fine. You just pick up a tube at the bottom of the ride, you take it up. Um, with you in most cases, if you're riding down single, you just, you know, you just grab whatever's there. If you're going in tandem, then it's two per and, um, you just carry them up together. And again, the lines were not long and they moved pretty quick. So, um, it wasn't like it was a big deal to do. Um, but on that particular one, the colossal curl, it's like, nope, you're you're just in a line. You get up to the top and you just get on. Sorry. I'm going on a tangent. Movies from 82 blade runner, blade runner, first blood, Annie, Tootsie, 48 Hours. Poltergeist. Tron. Oh, my goodness. Hey, sorry. Oh, boy. What else was in in 1977? See, I always remember Star Wars. I don't remember whatever else was out in 1977. Jaws, I think, came 77. Or maybe it was right after. The Spy Who Loved Me. Spy Who Loved Me. Close Encounters. Close Encounters of the Third Kind was 77? Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> See Smokey it. and the Bandit. Dude, I got all the cool movies. Your birth year sucked. You have Smokey Marcel. and the Bandit. I have Smokey. I have Smokey and the Bandit. I see. That's some good stuff in there. Anyway, 
So <clears throat> I think the only other challenge with trying to go with a group that big, um, potentially, and, and it's just tough if you're going to a new, new area and you're not sure where to go or um, if you're not familiar with, with different places or if you're taking the word of like, in, in, in our case, we were taking the word of uh, the place we were staying. They had a kind of a running list of, hey, here's places to go in the area and some restaurants you may want to check out and stuff like that. One of the bigger challenges is just trying to find places to eat where everybody wants to go and eat. Um, Which and, that's a pain in the ass. Uh, it is when so, you're in it's tough where you live it, yeah at it and then add yeah. more people it's really hard and then you have yeah. to wait longer because you're a huge party yeah uh, although i will say we did find a couple places during the week that were actually quite nice were very accommodating and re- food was great i thought they were really the, good for, for the dinners that we did so that was pretty good and uh we didn't really have much of a problem there although i will say i think moving forward if we were to do the same sort of set up where we're all kind of staying in, in a villa space that has a kitchen. I would probably work it a little smarter for breakfast and a little smarter for dinner where maybe a couple nights that were there. We, just cook your own stuff. I mean, you got the resources to do it. If you guys want to do it, I'll do it. It's fine. You're already here first, That takes folks. planning. And this, <sighs> this was not guess, a, but... a, a mom-led uh, venture. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not. So it is good. We had cereal the second two days, but outside of that, logically and economically, it is best to buy groceries, bring them, cook them yourself. Yes. But then you add in, we just spent the entire day at a park. Yeah. We're all tired. Yeah. We don't want to do anything. Well, it's fine. Here's what you do. You let the kids have fun during the day and then they can clean all the damn dishes later that night. How about that? I think that works great. <laughs> did you guys enjoy the food? Mm. Did you enjoy eating the food? It was good, wasn't it? Great. Now get in there and scrub a pan. I think you're I think you're in good shape with that. Yeah. Anyway, right. so so the trips were good, vacations were good, and uh we've officially kicked off the summertime, and that means that it is also movie uh, season. Movie season. It is the it is the high time for all of the big blockbuster films to come out, and there is nothing bigger on the screen right now, other than Wonder Woman. Wonder uh, Woman! <laughs> I, I have not been able to see this film just yet, although my wife is insisting that we have to go. Um, I absolutely want to see it. I think it's, it, to me, it's uh, um, certainly one of the most promising films that's going to come out this year. Um, and certainly everybody's been raving about it. And critically, it's actually been pretty highly acclaimed. It's the highest rated uh, comic book movie of Marvel and DC. Is it really? It is. It was more at than, more than Avengers? 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Holy cow. Um, at, on the opening weekend. Wow. Um, they actually it did a uh, early release of the critic reviews. They were supposed to have the uh, embargo until closer to the release date. They moved it up. Because they had the critic screenings and they were all so positive on there. They allow them a Twitter response. So you can say wow. very, very general things. Wow. They were also positive from that. They moved it up and allowed them to uh, get their full reviews out there. Well, um, good for them. I mean, and well, and frankly, good for, Mar- not for Marvel, but for DC. Um, I think they've been trying to really figure out the whole cinematic side of, of their universe for a little while. And it's nice to see them come off with one that is quite so popular right out the gate um okay so it's at a 93 right now that's still really but still, high especially for rotten tomato like think about it 285 huh? reviews 264 are fresh well jay think of it this way i think about how many great films there were in the last 10 years that didn't even score that high on rotten tomatoes so I would say they are definitely... Or there's a split where it's like yeah. the critics like it, but people didn't like it or yeah, vice yeah, yeah. versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, no, I, I echo uh, what your wife said. We went and saw it uh, the Friday. Did you go with the kids? We did. We took all three of them. What's the rating on Miles the film? Miles fell asleep, but... What's the rating on the film? It's PG-13. Okay. And for anybody concerned, um, we actually... I was on the fence. I wanted to take the girls because I knew how big an event this was. I mean, Wonder Woman on screen. This is one of the few movies in a long time that I've been really excited. I'm like, I want to see this opening weekend. Hmm. And I, for a couple weeks, I was like, when once actually the reviews started coming out, I started trying to 
hit people on Twitter like, hey, is it okay for kids? And never got any responses. But then like the Wednesday before, mm. I saw an article with Patty Jenkins, the director, and she said, I made this knowing full well that little girls are going to want to go. See, that's cool. So she did say, you know, if I could, if I had to make a PG movie, I would have made a PG movie. But we're working in World War One, and so it has to be PG thirteen. So you know, there's going to be well, elements and, and, of and, war. And let's be honest, you're trying to also draw in an adult and teenage audience to watch it, right? As well, so it's it's going to be hard to make a one size fits all for everyone that's going to work, right? And I don't fault them for the PG thirteen. And actually, I mean, our kids have seen Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's uh, the first one. And that was on TV, and they've they've seen it because we have it. But even like Star Wars: The Force Awakens, I didn't take them to see it. I waited, and it was after I had it for a while that then they saw it. It's not because you know I don't want to be too. You have to figure out. Okay, I need to assess the movie. Is it okay? What's not? What's coming? Yeah. anticipate maybe scenes that might be too much yeah uh stuff like that so when i that was when i heard from the director we made it knowing that they'd go right. i was like okay we're go so it was good for the kids to go see it and what's funny is the next day because they don't call her this isn't a spot they don't call her wonder woman in the movie She's right diana but, right so the whole next time we're at Target, Lenny sees Wonder Woman toys. And she's mm-hmm. like, is that Diana? And so, yes, it's See, Diana, it's Wonder Woman. That's cool. But it is Diana, yes. So that was awesome. However, there are a few moments, and I know you haven't seen it, where they go into relationship stuff, adult relationship stuff. Sure. And even some conversations, which are actually really hilarious. <laughs> because yes. it's a fish out of water story. And right. so she knows one way. Right. And so then you come from this civilization that has not that is just women and then you move into this the the world of men and just how we knew or know civilization typically there's questions and there's things that are different or why do you do that and so there's just different parts where i'm because i'm sitting next to we actually had almost the entire row because our neighbors went with us and then some friends of theirs ended up going and so i had their daughter, my oldest, the kids were in between me and my neighbor. Right. And so there's parts where I'm like trying to get their attention to try and take their attention away from what's on screen. Right. And be, hey, 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 right. look at me. Right. Focus over here. Right. They're like, what? Why are you, what are you doing? It's, you kind of just want to get enough of their attention so they didn't, uh, you know, they didn't see anything or whatever. But yeah. And, you and, and you're going to run just that. funny. And, you're going to run into that with any PG-13 film. There's going to be something in there that's going to warrant, A, warrant the, the rating, and two, um, for anyone who's not in that preteen age group, it's going, to, it's going to either go completely over their heads or, right. you know, it's going to be so in their face that they're just going to kind of be like, what? And there are, so. and it's not, <clears throat> the biggest takeaway though is that I asked uh, Ariana afterwards, I was like, did you like the movie? She's like, yes. I was like, what did you like? And she just said, everything. See, that's cool. And I took them. I bought Eleni a a little shirt. She had a little Wonder Woman cape behind her. And then I had Ariana had a shirt. And uh, so just them, you know, they really liked it. And that's cool. You know, this movie's very long overdue. Um, But I think I remember when Gal Gadot was first cast and it's like, oh, she's so skinny because she's she's sticking. You know, she's just. (sighs) She's it's so thin a, and whatever. Know. I'd seen her in the Fast and the Furious movies. And, you know, I you'd think about it and you're like, eh, this, I guess. This, this sort of stuff is so, and, and frankly, even for guys, I think, this is so ridiculous. Um, some of the body-related stuff that people want to throw into a character or throw into the personification of of fantasy, right? Or yeah. expectation. It's it's just kind of it's kind of stupid. Well, even then, they're like, you know, she's an Amazon. You know, who should play her is that um, MMA person because she has muscles or whatever. I and mean, so it's like, okay, I understand, but I. I mean, it is a film. We want to make sure we get somebody who can actually act for one. And so on I mean, that <laughs> on that point, I will say, 
Gal Gadot's nonverbal acting is amazing. Like mm. the amount of emotion she can reflect in an expression or a reaction. Like, see, now I've got to see this film with your talent. Like, I really haven't seen something. I can't recall another time where I'm like really noting how somebody right. is using their face right. to act. Right. And I know a lot of people were concerned about her acting before this movie. Right. Um, but it was that really surprised me. And because, I mean, you have reactions to Steve Trevor. You have reactions to seeing uh, foods, certain foods. You have right. reactions to what is this, you know. Right. And even, well, why do you think that way? And just some... She was really, really good. Huh. And this should wipe out any sort of questions that people had for this. If I was DC, I would say, okay, we're now calling Justice League Wonder Woman and some men. <laughs> Wonder Woman and Friends. Yes. It's nice to see a film do well with just the basics in there. Good story, good actress playing a good role, and I think all these other good pieces coming together to really make it work. So... There's a fantastic book out there for parents. It's actually a, a pair of books now um, by this author. His name is Walker Lamond, um, who's actually from the D.C. area, um, although I'm not sure if he still lives in the D.C. area. But at the time that he wrote this book, um, it, it, the title of it is Rules for My Unborn Son. Um, he was not yet a parent, uh, but had if I'm remembering correctly, had wanted to sort of capture all the lessons he learned from his father uh, growing up and all the things that he thought like, hey, th these are the these are the keys to to being a, a man in society or to to being a, a you know, a real adult um, in today's society. And these are the takeaways I took from my dad. Um, he actually later ended up having a daughter. And consequently ended up getting with his wife and they wrote a follow-up book called Rules for My Daughter, um, which I have not seen the copies of, but I'm, I'm very confident it's in the exact same format with many of the same snippets um, and some pretty great takeaways in there, which I'm sure we can get a copy and, and cover some of that here in the future. But in this one in particular, there's a few very good um, ones right out the gate that we kind of want to talk about that I think are relevant to today's podcast. Um, first off is ride in the front car of a roller coaster. Now I kind of disagree on that one. To me, it's more fun to be in the back. I think there's a little more anticipation. First of all, there's always less of a line. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's about yeah, another yeah. 10, 15 minutes to wait for the front car. Well, the front, tonight. see it, well, it's different realms of terror or fear. <laughs> it definitely depends on when the comfort level. you're on the front, you see everything that's going to happen. So like right. that ride that we would not get on at Bush Gardens where they stop you on the <laughs> decline and they just slowly push you over the edge to where if you are in the front, you're just looking straight down. Right. They have that fear. And then the sitting in the back is you get that guttural more of the, the which that's what I like the pool on the stomach right. and right. you because you're getting tugged right. everywhere right so yeah that that's we've kind of done both but if it's if it's me I will ride in the front if someone else really wants to but my preference usually is for middle to back of the train that's I I like that pull I like that tug I feel like you get more of the of the force and power of the coaster if you do that. It's like riding over a nice hill on a road and you know it's coming and so you kind of speed up to it and then when you go to go over the hill you let off the gas and then yeah. You, yeah now now that. now understanding <laughs> understanding too one it's nice that that's already my preference because if I were to again to try and get on a coaster with my wife she's going to say hell no if I try to get her in the front car of any coaster. It doesn't matter what kind it is. She's not going to do it. So um, Adrian thinks I'm crazy for getting on Chris. <laughs> she won't get on. <laughs> well, it depends, but you know what? It was, it was really great to get on them with, uh, your oldest. I think it was really cool to kind of share that with her and to have, have that memory and all that. That was definitely kind of fun. Uh, let's see here. Next rule. Very early on in the book, see movies on the big screen. Um, I really have to agree with this one. I think, there, there, I, yeah, no doubt. I, I, I think there, there's an experience to going to the movie theater 
Um, especially these days when you can get like reclining seats and half decent food in some places, maybe. Um, but especially when you're a kid, just movies seem so much bigger when you see them on the big screen. And, um, it's, it's definitely a full, full experience. I, I mean, the earliest films I can remember seeing as a child were some of the Disney re-releases. Cause nobody, cause you know, not everybody had VCRs back then. VCR. I know. Yes. For, for those of you out there who are, <laughs> I will, I will honestly say of the millennial generation that have no clue. The younger about millennials what, technically. I'm, I'm well, still right okay. okay. For you guys out there that are on the cusp of technology and have no understanding of the analog workings of a video cassette recorder, AKA VCR or a cassette deck. Um, there were these things that used to be on film that were in compact boxes that went into a larger box that had the play, stop, forward, reverse buttons on them. And these used to output a video format that could be viewed on a then very large television, uh, hopefully in color, and uh, would output copies of movies, um, you know, for your home entertainment. Not everybody had this technology back then. And actually what the, what the movie companies used to do was they would re-release films straight to the theater. So Star Wars was released more than once. Star Wars was released more than once. Um, Disney films were released more than once. Um, Jaws, I think, had multiple runs in the theaters. This was the way for the studios to help keep the fandom going and for people to re-enjoy these films um, in the actual theater because, again, not everybody was, you know, there wasn't such a thing as the home theater um, back then and not everybody had the means to, to do it. So I can remember seeing re-releases of all three Star Wars movies when I was a kid. Um, pro I probably saw them right before Return of the Jedi came out because I think I saw that in real time. I've, yeah, I've heard about the release. And then uh, the Indiana Jones films... Um, which were definitely huge on the big screen. I mean, that's Steven Spielberg, E.T., um, and then the Disney films, um, Cinderella, Peter Pan. I think Peter Pan is the, f is the first one that I remember seeing. I don't really remember like the uh, first ones I saw. One of the ones, though, that is like the in my head the most is uh, the base theaters used to show movies a few movies. I mean, the military theaters. The military base theaters, yeah. yeah. And, well, one, they played the national anthem before your movie. Yes, yes, they did. Uh, two, it was cheaper than going to one off base. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and they were generally an old theater, not updated at all. It was more of an auditorium with a screen. <laughs> right, not, right. Not, not a traditional movie But theater. the one movie that really sticks out in my brain is The Mask of Zorro. Because oh, yeah. that opening is black, and yeah. all you hear is the guitar. You hear, and then you see him come out walking, and that opening is always that's like my big yeah, first movie theater opening. But I know there's movies before that, yeah, but yeah, that yeah, yeah. one's like in my brain, fresh. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. That, that see, you would have been what about when did that come out? You gotta look that up. See, now you brought it out here. Now you gotta look look that up. Because now you're you're putting a, a timestamp on this whole thing, yeah. And that one actually is one of my one of my favorite movies, especially um, revamps of a character. Because that the Antonio Banderas uh, Zorro bit was actually really really good. That was a good one. And then that was uh, 1998. Wow. So I was already older. But I mean, we did like re-releases of Star Wars. We Movies have always been a big thing for us, our family. Like right, we right. watched at home. I remember being scared of uh, sharks and dad <laughs> scaring me from behind the couch when we watched Jaws at home. Um, right, I think right. I watched Alien from behind the couch. Um, See now that now that for me was my wow women kick butt kind of film. That was you could say that was the Wonder Woman of our of at least my generation, because that was Ridley on the screen, kicking the tail out of an alien. That was <laughs> Ripley killing Ripley. That's right. Um, kicking the crap out of everybody else. Yeah. What else? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, we had a lot. We always had movies going. We would record yeah. the movies on the tapes. Um, we had one time when we lived in Jersey where we had a one week trial for HBO for a month. <laughs> I think we added like 30 new movies. And we week. recorded all these movies, <laughs> including Die Hard with a Vengeance. And oh, that's right. I, that's my favorite Die Hard because I've right. seen it. The that's most. right. That's right. The one um, with Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. And, uh, Jeremy Irons. Yes. Yes. Simon Says. That's a good one. Um, Yeah, movies have always been a part. And even if it's not on the big screen, which I would suggest, and that's partially the reason why I live where I live, um, because there's a theater nearby. Nice. Um, Just we, you know, movies in general, (laughs) the stories, we always watch stuff. Right. I mean, we watch Back to School. Movies have always Rodney just existed. Right, 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 right. We had Back to School, and we had what else was on that? We had tape? Super. We had Superman. We had we had Superman, we had Superman on that. one and Superman two back to back on there. So it was never as simple as you were just going to watch the first Superman. No, yeah, because no. you could record on the same tape. That's right. Multiple things as long as you had because you had eight hours of tape. That's right. And if you recorded it on. <laughs> The certain speed, <laughs> you could get more hours. You can extend your experience to 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so you could possibly get three or four movies on right, one tape. Right, right. And we would get into where, if it was on TV, because they used to show movies on TV, mm-hmm. where we would, uh, if oh we missed the commercial break, we would pause oh. it, rewind it, find where it faded out. Pause it immediately, you know so what? that yeah. way the fade would then fade back in when the when the when the movie that came was, back that, in. That was the craziest thing, though, because that watching them on television. First of all, it always took twice as long. Some days they split. Sometimes they split what should be a one night, two and a half hour movie into a two night extravaganza. I think Gone with the on Wind. ABC Gone with the Wind was known like for four that. hours. Five hours, dude. I I have the Blu-ray of Gone with the Wind, and it you got to commit. Like you got, you need to be sitting down and you need to not get up for a while. So that, to me, that's a lazy day film if you're going to watch that, but put that on television and it makes it twice as long. Um, oh my God. Yeah, no. And then if you're recording it, God help you because you got to have the remote handy. You got to get it. If you lose it, you went to commercial, you're taping commercials. Now you got to back up. Now you got to stop it. And you got all the two minutes to to get it done before they come back in from commercial and you better end up at the right spot. Otherwise you cut out half of Rupp Bettler telling Scarlett O'Hara to piss off and, and leave him alone. Um, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things, um, that certainly I, I remember as a kid these days, it's a whole other bag with the whole streaming thing and everything else. But, um, but yeah, go to the movies, go to the movies with your kids. Take them, take them out for something fun. Make it a treat. Make it a reward. Make it something that's that's an experience for them. And I, I promise you, they'll they'll probably remember it. Yeah, I would say though, uh, try and find matinees. Matinees are always better with a family dude. of five. It's so hard, but matinees I know our our local theater. It seems that matinees end at twelve. Uh, matinees used to go until five. They used to start at like one o'clock. Yeah, like you didn't get your evening pricing until four like the or five, five o'clock. Yeah, the five o'clock yeah. shows, but it's it. They're really early. Uh, check out the maybe ten thirty a.m. shows. Uh, those are usually a lot cheaper. Um, they also have some audio uh, or sensory sensitive shows. If you have kids that, you know. They don't like flat, you, flashing, you know, lights, flashing lights, being in the dark, so the, yeah. but also the volume's a little lower. They have the lights yeah. on a little bit, and so it's not, it, it helps out. Um, By the way, could you imagine seeing some of the movies we saw as kids on the IMAX now? Oh, God. Could you imagine that? I've done IMAX, and I've done like the front two rows of IMAX. I did Inception IMAX Ooh. in the front row. Wow. Adrian, <laughs> we're watching it and it was like, oh my God, that building is so huge. It's falling on me. <laughs> and I think, I think the only one I can remember doing in recent memory was like the reboot Star Trek where we went out, we went out to the Udvar mm-hmm. Hazi Center. And, I saw, yeah, and, and we saw the first there. one. We took dad there for that. I think so. That was it. I've also Birthday, seen. Father's Day? Something uh, like that. Maybe. 
It was one of those. I saw Dark Knight there. Oh, also saw God. the one of the Transformers movies, which uh, those were pretty good because in the IMAX when Optimus is on yeah. the full screen, that's yeah. an actual like two scale size. Yeah, that that's a whole experience. That whole thing. So I mean, there's stuff out there, but case in point. Save up for those IMAX. Save tips. for those. Right. Take your kids to the movies. Yeah. Um, whatever you're gonna do, make it an experience. Make it fun. Make it enjoyable. Yeah. And the so movies are a great storytelling device. The traditional story traditionals device. are books. And so we, you know, wanted to share a couple books that we share with our kids. Um, I'll have a couple here. If you know, I just recommend. They're really good, and they our kids really enjoy them. So we have the very hungry caterpillar by Eric Carl. Um, it's a really, it's a board book. Uh, they do have larger formats, but the board book comes in handy because this book will be read a lot. For those, um, for those of you folks that are, that are new parents that are not familiar with the concept of a board book, it's basically a, a book that has been put onto a thick cardboard esque page. Um, it's a whole lot more durable. It holds up to wear and tear a whole lot more. And um, they're really, really fun. And there are incredible uh, books out there that are available in that format. Yeah. And, and they're not very big either. They're usually pretty small. Right. This one's kind of a rectangular, maybe a you know, four by or five by seven. Uh, the other one is Dojo Daycare uh, by Chris. I might be butchering it, but it's Chris Tugas, maybe. That's what we tell our kids it is. Hi-ya. Uh, the first little page in there has that on there. hi yeah. And uh, there's, it's a really great story. Um, it's hilarious. It's about ninja kids and ninja dads and their ninja pads. And, and according to the book, it's a full-blown ninja riot. This is right. Uh, <laughs> the master claps and yells out, quiet. Nice. Um, you know, it's really fun to hear uh, my wife reading this to our kids. So Very Hungry Caterpillar, Dojo Daycare. Uh, if you don't want to buy them, go... Go to the library. Visit your library. There's a lot of stuff there. Um, and then I guess uh, last get bit here. Get your kids reading. Yeah. <laughs> last bit here. Since this is the uh, Father's Day edition of the Amateur Dads podcast, um, do want to encourage folks, if you can, think back, especially if you're a new parent, um, to when you were a kid um, and to those moments that were special with uh, your parents, uh, special with your dads. Um, and try to recollect those and share those again with your parents. I'm, I've found that especially since I've become a new, um, a new dad, there have been tons of different experiences that uh, we now have in common um, that either I had as a child with him or that my son is now having with me that um, we can share and talk about. And it's a whole other level of kind of connecting and and um and relating and all that sort of stuff if you have the time and have the means please uh try to try to capture some of that and share some of that um not just on father's day but kind of throughout the year you'll find that that there's kind of a rich bit that comes with some of that um and then also for for new dads that are out there i would encourage you first and foremost um give yourself a break um, we're all doing yeah. our best. We're all trying to figure it out. We're all trying to, um, do the best we can as parents and, uh, are trying to look out for our kids in all the, all the best ways that we know how to, um, you're not going to have to figure it all out up front, and no one's going to expect you to know everything. Um, and you're never going to know everything, um, at any given time. So, um, give yourself a break, um, do the best you can tell the ones around you that you love them. And uh, just let them know you're doing the best you can for them. And uh, I promise you, you'll probably see some of that uh, return back to you. So. so that's all we got for this week on the Amateur Dads podcast. Follow us in the meantime on Twitter. At Amateur Dads is the Twitter on there. We'll put up posting on when we're working on a new show, when we have stuff coming out. We'll retweet some interesting articles possibly. And if you have any questions, you can send them that way. We also have uh, emails, amateurdads at gmail.com. Uh, 
you know, like my brother said, we're all new at this. We're all working on it. I have three kids and I'm still learning new stuff. You know, I've never had a child that is the age of my oldest. So <laughs> when you think of it that way, I mean, I have a, she's going to be in first grade. I've never had a first grader. So, you know, we all just have to share knowledge. And man's been around for millennia. Up up for the ride. Yeah. Anyway, guys, do keep in touch. Let us know your feedback. Catch you guys next time.